This next demo demonstrates some of the basic options of the IG Grid control. So here I have a grid that's similar to the one that we first started with, except you'll notice a few different things. First of all, there's no headers being rendered, and there's a label here for current employees, and the hover state is disabled. So these are all settings that you can change based off of some of the basic options of the grid. And there's a few others that I'd like to show you as we dive into the code as well. So this demo is set up the same way as the very first one that we looked at. The loader is bringing in the JavaScript and CSS files that are required for the sample. And I'm saying that I require IG grid. Here I've flattened the data that the sample is using, but it's basically the same information that was used in the first demo. Where things are a little bit different is how I'm setting up the grid itself. Auto generate columns is still set to false. Default column width is set to 180 pixels. And my data source is the data that's available up here. Now, as I add caption, you can see that the text that's added into caption shows up here above the grid. And it's formatted with the nice rounded corners and makes it look like it's part of the grid itself. Setting enable hover styles to false disables that hover state as you go over rows in the grid. It's set to true by default, but in case you want to turn it off, this is how you do that. I can disable headers in the grid. So if I comment out this option and refresh the page, now you can see that the column headers are rendered within the grid. I can also give explicit values for height and width. Now, something interesting that I want you to see that happens as those values are changed. So you notice that the height is constrained pretty cramped. I mean, you'd never use it this way. And the width is also brought down, so now that we have these scroll bars. But what I'm trying to illustrate to you here is that the grid has its own container, so that if you have specific constraints on its dimensions, it will automatically scroll in order to make sure whatever columns you have defined will show up whether there's room or not. Now, the scrolling here kind of leads to the fact of something that I want you to see within the markup. If I collapse all this down, you can see that there's a grid container. This is a div element that's generated by the control itself. So as you create a selector against the table, so if I go back to the source code and you see that you have this table here, the only actual element within HTML is the table element itself with the ID of grid. But as the control is instantiated, it creates a wrapper around that base element that you created. Now this div acts as a container for the grid, so that has the ability to handle scrolling or make sure that other UI elements line up correctly. So for instance, when we get into the demo that discusses paging, there's a number of different UI elements that are generated in order to render the pager. Well, those elements are generated and placed underneath the table, but still within this div container that's generated by the control. So as I expand this down, you can see here's the table element, and all of the rest of the markup is generated by the control. But this grid container element is necessary in order to make sure that the behaviors that you enable are grouped together with the table element correctly. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility in the way you can make the grid look just by setting a few properties.